the sixth president of Uganda. Paul Mwanga is a Ugandan politician who served as the president of Uganda. He joined the East African Post and Telecommunication Administration between 1943 and 1950 before entering politics. He served as a member of parliament from 1962 to 1964 and later he became an ambassador to Egypt and France. When Idi Amin came to power, he went into exile in England from 1972 to 1978 before returning to fight in the Uganda-Tanzanian War of Liberation between 1978 to 1979. When the government of Amin was overthrown, he served as Minister of Internal Affairs under Yusuf Lule, later under Benaisa, who wanted again to demote him to the position of ambassador in 1980. Paul Mwanga didn't accept just a move because he knew that he was not going back again as an ambassador because Benaisa wanted to get rid of him. He appealed directly to the National Consultative Commission about Benaisa's action. They consider his case. He was then appointed as the Minister of Labour, a position he held until May 1980. Benaisa wanted to change the name of the game. He tried the same tactics used on Ojoko Yete, and they tried the same tactics on Paul Mwanga, but they all failed to have that dream come true. As I look back, we realize that most of our leaders at the moment they come to power. They come with abundant inferiority complex. When they get to power, they tend to shift away from the main goal of ruling Uganda. Be nice, sift away from the Moshe argument, even if he knew that Lule has tried that game and he didn't succeed, he still went forward, trying the same trick again and again. violating the Moshe Agreement that was intended to unite all Ugandans after the fall of Idi Amin's regime. 
Our main problem is every time a new leader comes in, he goes back to his base, to their villages, to their tribe, to their personal friends. That is how the one Ugandan ruled. Most of us, and even the leaders of yesterday, and the leaders of today, we are just moving like monkeys. Because when that monkey which is in front, and the second mountain, the, the second monkey is seeing the tail of the first monkey, and still he keeps on laughing. He says, you man, you have a tail. He does not know that he himself has also a tail. And that is how we behave. And that is how our leaders are behaving up to today. Something that is not acceptable and nobody can accept it. We don't realize that we are just people like any other people we are trying to rule. And when you put yourself above everything, then the house of cards begins to fall. And you begin to follow your own path. And if you try, to interfere in their decision making process they will chop off your fingers on the 12th of May 1980 the army removed Godfrey Benison and decided to install a six-man military commission headed by Paul Mwanga as the chairman. He held the power of the president of Uganda between the 22nd of May to 15 December 1980. Following the election of 1980, Mwanga became the head of Electoral Commission. And after the election, he declared Uganda People's Congress the winner. He served in the same government as the Vice President of Uganda and Minister of Defense. under Obota regime. When Obota was overthrown for the second time, Paul Mwanga served as the Prime Minister of Uganda under President Tito Kero before being succeeded by Abraham Waligo in October 1986. When Museveni came to power, Paul Mwanga was arrested and they jailed him. They kept him in prison for four years and he was acquitted in 1988 without charge. Paul Mwanga played various roles in bringing Ugandans together. We also know that he was involved 
in initiating informal negotiation with the representative of some insurgency, insurgency groups based in London. After the death of Oyeta Job in 1983, the initiative was mistaken by some committee ministers and prominent UPC supporters for a plot to topple the government. A close head to Obote reported to some of the prominent UPC supporters, just as the Assistant Secretary of UPC, Cecilia Oguago, at that moment, that Mwanga was ganging up with the insurgents to topple the regime. That is when one can realize that Ugandans are cock up generations who does not know what they are doing, what they want, and where they are going. One mistake after the other. We fail to get our house together since Idi Amin came to power. We are all blindfolded with the taste of fame. And each and every one of us dream of getting something from somebody if you are the president of Uganda. We are ready to sell our pride, dignity, and lie to our teeth when we see a position of fame. You fight hard to get it until that door open. We forgot what politics is all about and decided to drive a car without a lances. Paul Mwanga was freed from jail in October after the government of Yoweri Museveni dropped charges. After being in prison for four years they accused him of kidnapping two truck drivers in 1981 while he was serving as the vice president and minister of defense in Obote's government. That was of a throne in a military coup of 1985. When he came out of prison, he told the world that his political disagreement with Yoweri Museveni did not begin when he took power. They fought one another when Yoweri Museven was in the government with President Obote. Through house, the Bush War. Throughout the Bush War. And he said, Yoweri Museven the present president of Uganda is the enemy of Uganda. He is a selfish person who does not think about other people. He never tolerates any political dissent.
Paul Mwanga warn Ugandans who are jubilating over Museveni's rise to power, telling all of us that we have no idea what awaits us. We, are, we have no idea what is going to come next. He knew you were in seven, in and out. What he's thinking and what he's going to do to Ugandans. He predicted that when Museveni rule ends in 2060, Uganda will have lost all its possession and national assets. The political class will be divided, one against the other, and Uganda will be in ruins. Those of you, those of us, who didn't take the message of the former president and vice president of Uganda, Paul Mwanga, should think twice. He told the truth to empower, and the truth he spoke about we are seeing it today. That's the house of God, the Uganda we know, has fallen apart. And is falling into pieces. His warning turned out to be true. Because if you look at what is happening in Uganda today, then you know that by the time we knock down to 2060, the house of God will fall apart. Uganda as a state will be in ruins. Don't begin to shed crocodile tears that you didn't know what was going to happen. Paul Mwanga, the son of Uganda, sounded the drum of pain that awaited us or before he was taken away from us. According to his own words, it is up to us, Ugandans, to set back the clock and make sure that the 2060 ruins does not happen. It is time to say enough is enough. Enough is enough without regrets. Without regrets. He gave us the warning. We didn't listen to what he was saying. We didn't listen. Instead, we are just crying that this man is a bad man. And we knew already from the beginning. You see, one of his ministers was bragging on Uganda newspaper already in 2002, somewhere then, that they were going to rule Uganda for 60 years, and they would have beaten the record 
of the British colonial rule in Uganda. Here is a very important cabinet minister going to the media and bragging that they are using the tactics of the British colonial masters to rule Uganda for 60 years. They have already ruled Uganda for 35. They are looking forward to rule Uganda for another 40 years. They are going to rule Uganda with 2 million foreigners who are not Ugandans and the one who are going to take over your houses, your land, your job, and by the time they are finished with you, you will be homeless. You will be homeless. And what happened in other countries? The United States or in Australia, where the indigenous people become homeless and they are being ruled by people who are not the owner of that country. Then it is really painful. And here is the cabinet minister of the present government who was bragging that they're going to rule Uganda for 60 years. And they can and will create dictatorship. But if we go back to the warning Paul Mwanga gave us that he knows the man well and his prediction is seen and we know it and it has been moving around and Ugandans are reaping the pain of showing the mustard seeds. We keep playing games with one another when we are given something small. We become very happy at knowing that the next time something goes wrong, even that small thing they give you will be a thing of nothing because. We are very fond of betraying one another, left and right, just to earn a little bit of money, just to learn to have fame, just to keep our family going. And let me tell you something. It is not going to take you anywhere. Think about what Paul Mwanga said. Those presidents who come to power, they use a system of divide and rule. Ugandans are now divided. The 1% and the 99% who has nothing. You don't have anything. I don't have anything. They don't have anything. And if you don't watch out, you will die without anything. I hear people saying, because of Museven, <coughs> I managed to buy a car. I thought I would never have a car. Because of Museven, I managed to buy a house. 
I never thought I would buy a house, but let me tell you something. The money you use for buying those cars, the money you use for building those houses, is the taxpayer's money. We are good in stealing it. It comes you steal it, you build a house. It comes you steal it, you buy the car. Now let me tell you one thing. When the time comes, That house you stole from the taxpayers. And that car you bought with the taxpayers' money will raise a lot of eyebrows. Thank you for listening and don't forget to subscribe. I will be back.